For Kruma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is political analyst, Professor Raymond Sutner, here to unpack his column titled, Things Fall Apart in South Africa Today, and ANC Leadership Appears Unable to Act Decisively. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. What exactly do you mean when you speak of things falling apart systematically? Well, if you look around at the various institutions in South Africa, even though there's a new leadership in the National Prosecuting Authority, they couldn't just fire everyone below those at the top. Consequently, a lot of prosecutions fail or they don't get things together properly. Uh, one can see this in the Eismacher Schule case, where they don't seem to have followed the correct procedures. Um, you have this in the Hawks, where there's a new leadership, but many of the others are from before. And a number of people have been identified for potential criminal charges, and that's not happened. But I think more seriously about things falling apart is that even some of the gains that were made in the early years of democracy with water, electricity, housing, and so forth, have actually been eroded because they've not been properly maintained. They didn't have systems for them to be maintained. And I don't think that uh, there's proper oversight over what is done. There's millions that are not accounted for. Uh, most of the municipalities have not got clean audits. And it's just uh, continues like that. So you have that at the level of institutional systems. But also, when we achieved democracy in 1994, there was a hope that we would join together all the people of South Africa, uh, as the Freedom Charter said, hand in hand to build this uh, freedom. But there's much, there may be greater divisions now than there were before because of the differences between those who've managed to achieve some level of wealth and those who remain poor or even more poor than before especially after COVID. COVID has brought in starvation on a high level. So the systems for providing a welfare net for the poor, the systems, uh, institutions of governance are not functioning properly, but it also coexists with, uh, in my impression, increased hostility between sections of the population. And in this article, you repeat the point that those who were oppressed under apartheid remain oppressed, except for some who have been able to escape from poverty and new categories of people who are oppressed. Is it valid to compare the present with what we associate with apartheid? Well, you know, we don't have white minority rule, but what we do have is the same conditions of uh, deprivation of basic needs continuing, and the people who are experiencing that are 99% Black people, meaning Africans, colors, and Indians. You do see some whites at the stop street sometimes, but it's in the main, uh, the poor in the main are the same people who were the poor under apartheid. And when the police take action, if there's a roadblock, someone like me who's white gets waved past as if I can do nothing wrong, you see. But you can see Africans lying on the pavement being frisked or cars being stopped, uh, which are black people, not white people. So that the idea of profiling, racial profiling, who is a potential criminal is also racist. If you live in the suburbs, they have WhatsApp groups, and very often they say, uh, look out, watch out for this car with three Bravo men, meaning three black men. And you know, you're living in a country where people are crazy, and someone can just take a shot at this so called suspicious car. There's no reason to be suspicious. But in the eyes of the, in the discourse of the day, 
you still have an identification of criminality with being black. And you refer to the masses. Is that not a term that has become a cliche? Why do you not simply refer to citizens and the need for an active citizenry? Well, you know, the word masses you'll find in uh, a book of keywords by Raymond Williams, who's a very famous cultural scholar. It's also used by the late Stuart Hall and others. Masses is not the same as citizens. In South Africa, you have a number of inhabitants who are not citizens, who are uh, subject to xenophobia. So that the, the concept of the masses is much wider than citizens. And citizenship is a legal term, whereas uh, the masses, it's also a social term, but the masses is not a legal term. It's a social term referring to large numbers of people who, in the eyes of some, are the people who make history. In my view, the reason why we have what freedom we do have today is the role of the masses in making South Africa ungovernable, apartheid unworkable, creating people's power. All those were mass activities, not just famous leaders like Mandela, important as Mandela was. Mandela would not have been able to achieve anything without the role of the masses, who, in the case of the Bantustans, were not even citizens then. They were, they, the citizenship of South Africa had been denied. So the two, two terms are different. I believe in active citizenry, but I'm afraid that the word leaves out people who may not have citizenship, but who are, you know, the Freedom Charter says South Africa belongs to all who live in it, black and white. It doesn't say South Africa belongs to citizens. So that's what I believe in. And lastly, you suggest that it is hard for the ANC to now clamp down on assassinations. This you say is because the extent of law breaking and impunity has become so widespread that law breaking not observant of the law has become a norm for the ANC. So can you explain to us how law breaking can be a norm? Yes, it's, it's, it's a contradiction in terms in many ways but it's a contradiction in terms which exists in South Africa today, where a large numbers of those who ought to be exemplary, who lead the country, have been engaged in unlawful activities. If you read the evidence in the Zondo Commission, uh, and it appears that it's very common when people are supposed to provide water and tenders are put out for that water provision, that no water is ever seen, but millions are appropriated. So it's become very, very extensive. That's why just about every municipality in South Africa has not got a clean audit, and it's to do with this sort of illegality, the fact that the rules are not observed, that it's become a norm when the majority of municipalities don't get a clean audit. The norm is irregularity, not regularity. So that also amongst the police force, when you look at the statistics of how many of them have had criminal complaints, but also with impunity, because very few of them get dismissed or charged and things like that. So I think it's an accurate statement, unfortunately. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's quality about things fall apart in South Africa today and ANC leadership appears unable to act decisively.